All right, so now we're gonna learn how to combine tables using Union. Union is very important tools in SQL in order to combine tables and very powerful. So previously we have learned how to combine tables using the join methods. So what we are doing in joins, we have two tables, customers and orders, and we are joining the columns together. So at the results, we're gonna get one big table, one wide table with all the columns from left and the, from the right. But with union, we are as well like combining two tables, but instead of combining the columns, here we're gonna combine the rows together. So here we're gonna get very long table, including all the rows from the left and from the right, but having the same columns. So we will not get all columns from left and right. Instead of that, we will get all the rows from left and all the rows from right. Okay, so now in order to understand the union, we're gonna have the following example. So in our tutorial database, we have two tables. We have the table customers and we have the table employees. So now we have the following tasks, make a list of all persons from customers and from employees where we have the first name, last name and the country. So that means it doesn't matter whether the person is a customer or employee, we're gonna have make a list with everything. So in order to solve these tasks, we're gonna use the union operator between two tables, customers and employees. So if we check this closely, you will find those three informations in both of the tables. So we have first name and customers. We have as well the same in employees, last name and customers, last name in employees, and we have the country in employees and the same as customers. This is very important that we have the matching columns from both of them. So the database, if we start the union between both of them, the database can select the columns only from the left table. So we will have first name, last name, and country. And we will not have here again the same columns from the right one. It's not joined, it is a union. So the left one gonna decide what are the column names. So this is as well very important. So the database is gonna go and select everything from the left table and put it at the result. And it's gonna do the same for the right one. So that for the employees, and select all the records and put it over here. And with that, we have a full list of all persons from customers and as well from employees in one result. This is very important that both of the tables at the SQL query should have exactly the same number of columns and as well the same order. So if we are doing like in the employees first, the last name, then the first name. In the results, we will get that switch as well. So be careful with the order of columns and the number of columns should be matching between left and right. One more thing is very important is that there is two types of union. Type number one, that is the union all, where we're gonna get the result exactly like this. So that means if there is any duplicates between the table one and the table two, those duplicates gonna stay at the result. So there is no check the uniqueness of the results. If there is any like person on the left and the same person on the right, nothing gonna happen. We will get the whole results. But if you wish to remove those duplicates, so if you check the results over here, you can see John, he is customer and at the same time he is as well employee so this could happen yeah so in order to remove such a like duplicates we could use the other type of union and that is only the union without union all so i'm going to show you that once we are writing the sql statements so this is as well very important to understand in the union if you want to have the duplicates like exactly like the data inside the tables then you should use union all if you want to remove the duplicates, then use union. So now let's see how we're gonna do that in SQL. So this is really easy to do in SQL. All what we're gonna do is that we're gonna write two queries, one for customers, one for employees, and then just put union between them and we're gonna get the results. So let's try building the first one. So select first name, last name, and we need the country from customers so this is the first query let's just execute that and see okay now i have a list from the customers 
And then we're gonna write that again for the employees. So select in employees we have as well first name, last name, and emp country from employees. So let's run the query and see. So now we have the list from employees. So as you can see, we have now two queries, one for customers and one employees in order to do the union, like to maintain all the duplicates as well. We're going to write the keyword between them union all. So now we're going to run the whole thing and let's check. So with that, we got all the first name, last name, country from both of the tables, from customers and employees. And as you can see, this list contains duplicates because for example, John is in customer as well in the employees. So if we wish like to remove such a duplicates between customers and employees or other results, we just remove the all from here. We just use the union so let's run that again. So now we're going to get a unique list of information. So John can only happen once here over here. So this is how we're going to do it in union. One more thing is about how to control the column names. So as you can see, the first name, last name, country, this comes from the query above. So this query over here is going to control the naming of our table. So if you wish to have like different column name, so don't change it over here because nothing gonna happen. Database is gonna just ignore it. So here we're gonna control the names. So if I wish to add, for example, let's say person, first name, and here person, last name, and here person, country, and we rerun the, qu the query. As you can see, we have the names over here. And if you change anything over here in the query below, nothing gonna happen. So let's have first name. So let's run the query. You see, nothing gonna happen. So now let's test a few things over here. So if I just make a problem where I'm gonna have first, we have the last name and then comes the first name. So it is the opposite as the first query. So let's run this. As you can see, the database will not notice that we have here mistake or we have problem where we have above the first name, last name, and then here we have last name, then first name, because the database doesn't care about that. It only cares that both have the same data type. Like since we have here var character and here we have var character, it could present the results. So for the database, it doesn't care about like whether you are doing it rightly or not. The column name, they don't say anything for it. So that's why be careful about the order of the columns uh, when you are doing the union between two tables. So now if we go and try another data type, for example, customer ID, so customer ID is integer and the first name over here is var character. So if I run the query, we will get an error because I think it's hidden over here because there is mismatching between the data type. The database cannot like combine strings and then after that we're going to have integer. That's why the data type is very important for SQL. So let me just repair everything. and run so now it works because the data type is same so let's try some other errors <laughs> i'm just making things broken so above we have three columns we have first name last name country and we have here the same so if i have like different number of columns between the two of the tables let's say have salary so now we have four columns in one sql and the other we have three if I run this query, we will get as again an error because it's gonna say you have different number of columns between those queries and we cannot do the union. 
That's why the data type is very important. The number of columns is very important and as well the order of the columns should be matching. All right, everyone. So with that, we have covered the SQL joins and now you know how to combine SQL tables together. And in the next chapter, we will learn many important SQL functions and we will start with the aggregation functions. And in the video description, you will find a link to free SQL materials like the database and the data of this tutorial, the SQL sheet sheet and as well all the presentations. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.